Hey, it's Summer here, and I am going to make another Fire Emblem doll. This time I am focusing on Claude from The Free Hopes, um, the new Warriors game which is coming out. I really like Claude, he's one of my more favourite characters, but I'm not so fond of some of his outfits. His hero's outfit is pretty nice, but it's also kind of a bit similar to the um, Niles doll that I've done before. Not like 100%, but you know, like the set elements there. So I wanted to do something different. And the Free Hopes version looks good. Well, I mean, I say it looks good, but I've not got a full like idea of the outfit. So I've come up with this sketch from basically screenshots and grabs that I've got that I feel like could be right. <laughs> so this chest palette here is something that I've almost entirely made up because the sketches and some of the screenshots seem a little bit different to me in how the layout is. Um, so it's sort of like the golden deer face. Not that you'll be able to actually see that once it's all gold and sort of like put onto like a plate kind of idea. And I feel like the back half of this chest plate is the same. Um, I could be wrong. I mean, I've got no idea of what the actual back half is at this point in time. Um, it might be an idea to play the game first and actually know what the character looks like, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to guess <laughs> and see how well I get it. Um, yeah, there were several things that confused me. This cape for a start, it looks like it's folded in half here, yet in several screenshots it almost looks like there's two separate capes. It's going to be fun to see how accurate that I have got this in the end. Not only that, but converting it to a doll is already going to make changes. And there's just things that I can't do. So, I don't know. I feel like guesswork could be um, a bit of a thing here. But there's also another issue. And that is my doll's face. So I've got the Hunter Huntsman, which I think could make a really nice Claude. Except he's got this mark on his face here. Now, the Ever After High Boys, finding them secondhand, um, it's a bit expensive as it is. So I've tried everything to get this out of his face. I've done bleach, I've done benzoyl peroxide, I've done acetone. I've basically cooked him in UV. <laughs> um... And I've done this multiple times, and it is not going away. I have no idea what this is. So, he's getting the beard. Yes, this will be more like the time skip Claude wearing the Free Hopes outfit. <laughs> so, that that's the big difference I can say straight off is going to be happening. Anyway, let's see what I make. <laughs> Okay, so for the hair, I'm going to be rerouting using this yarn. I think it's quite nice because I can just basically unfurl it and keep it with its sort of like curliness. I also want some flocking added to the head. Oh, apologies for the hands in between projects. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to... I don't like this line here. So um, whilst I do want flocking across the bottom, I'm going to clean this head up. Then I'm just going to paint where I actually want the flocking to go and chop this down into mini, mini, tiny, tiny little pieces and glue it on the head with PVA. It'll take about a day to dry, but we'll see the results and then I'll start to uh, just jabbing it all through. So I finished plugging him and he looks huge. Now, um, when you brush out yarn, you're going to lose like a lot of this extra fluff, so a lot of this weight's going to go. Um, the big problem is, is having to do it individually in order to be able to keep the style and shape. So I've got to go through with some sort of like a mix of fabric conditioner and water and just brush it through individually, get out a lot of that extra weight and keep these nice little curls going. There, so he's finally finished. After twirling and brushing it out and then using half a bottle of hairspray, um, I managed to brush out this much yarn as I was doing it. It has, And then attacking it with scissors, it has finally sort of gone into the position that I like. Now it's time for the face-up, so I'm going to rub his face clean with acetone 
Um, one of the things that I do before a face up is I will practice drawing the face so that I kind of know what I want. The beard is going to be a difficult part for me. Um, I've never really done a beard before and his jawline is actually different from the jawline of the character. So that's going to be interesting. Um, when it comes to drawing the eyes, I will practice drawing them like again and again on a smaller scale so that I can kind of get the idea of what I want and sort of like a bit of practice in there. But it's always different drawing it on a 3D head than it is on a 2D head. So here he is, fully repainted, and now his hair is nicely styled. This is my first go at making a beard, so um, please be kind. I think it turned out quite well, and it definitely covered up those marks that I couldn't get rid of on his face. Then I pierced his ear. This is actually one of my old earrings that I have like fully like manipulated into being small. Um, I was going to glue it in place at first, but then I realised it just wasn't going to stick. So now we're moving on to the outfit. Quite happy with that, actually. Um, now, when it comes to an outfit, it's always important to work on the bottom layers first. So here I have made a pair of leggings, then made a simple skirt. Now I'm making a shirt. So it's sort of like I am completely sort of deconstructing this outfit from the bottom to the top um, because as much clothes that you're putting on, like the wider he becomes, his measurements change. I needed to know how big his waist was going to be so that I could put the Velcro on in a way that wasn't going to like over bulk it. I did this the first time around and I realized I kind of made this too bulky altogether. So it's sort of like some trial and error. I've put a mandarin collar on here and inside this little bit there is a magnet. This will come in handy later. So for the shirt pattern I'm actually I've got my big book patterns here. Um, this is a pattern by Requiem Art Designs on Etsy and it's really handy. I very much enjoy her patterns. I've got a bunch. <laughs> So I'm just sort of taking the bits of the pattern that I like and then leaving the bits that I don't like and extending like these. Then once I've got this shape and I know what this is going to look like, I'm going to be working on these bits here. Um, so basically I put some black fabric over the top, worked out where it was going to be. I've been decorating this black fabric. <laughs> so I'm just going to sew it in place over the top and hopefully it should work out all right it's still all going to need a little bit more decorations once it's done and then after i've sewn these in place i should be working on this belt um so it's sort of like going okay so i sew this then i paint everything it's got to have like lot of little black circles everywhere then I make the belt, then I work on the shoes, then the armour, oh maybe I need to make the cape, <laughs> that also needs to be decorated. So it's sort of like just figuring out which bits are the bits that go on top, like a puzzle, so that I can sort of get it going. Oh, I forgot all about this. So I've got him put together and painted. I've just painted these bits on. These are actually hole punched circles which I just glued in place, which I think look nice. And I'm working on the cape right now. So I actually used the skirt pattern and just pinned it in place. And I've created a stencil, which I can use to cut out my gold iron on -y sort of stuff. When it came to making it, I realized that it was going to be too thick if I used two layers of cotton and also You've got a lot of black on black, so I used a thin satiny fabric for the top so that it was not too thick. And I've just basically painted on top of my thing to be able to get a nice shape. I really like using the sewing machine because I can actually get a different colour on the top to the bottom. So I'm using gold on the bottom and black on the top so that it's not sticking out too much in the final project. So I'm just going to sew that 
directly onto his shoulders. I do like to make things removable, but in this case he's going to have armor on top of that. So there's too many bits that could be removable and potentially go wrong. It's just easier to sew it all in place, especially because there's a lot of gathering going off on both sides here. Then I'm going to be working on the belt. Now belts are really easy. You literally just need a piece of fabric. I just glue in the um, sides. I've painted in some sort of decoration-y parts. So this is just going to go around. It's going to get velcroed place, so it's just going to be super simple. And in order to make it nice, it's going to get um, some bits that are going to just glue in place. And then I'm going to decorate it. So, simple-ish. Actually very complicated. Very difficult, actually. <laughs> So here we are, belts complete, the cape is tacked in place, and it's time to start working on the shoes. Now I've got these oversized, well they're not oversized, but they're just a little bit bigger than the actual foot. I got these from Etsy, so what I'm going to do is I'm sort of making a sock pattern using felt. Just tack it to the leg and then just cut it out, and I'm going to use some um, sort of stretchy leverette. Not super stretchy, but to sort of make a sock underneath for the actual shoe, and then I'm just going to paint the entire thing. So here are the boots. Now that they're done, I've glued and sewed them in the bottom here, and I've glued some embroidery thread to sort of add a bit of detail here. Now we've just got to get painted up so that they look the right colour. Um, you can't really see too well here, or you might be able to. I can't see what's happening with my camera. Um, the leggings are kind of binding up, so I'm going to have to shorten them. So that's really all. I'm just going to chop off the bottoms and glue a hem on. So I promise I haven't actually messed up the painting. It just needed a layer of primer so that I could actually get the proper colour on. So while I'm waiting for things to dry when I start doing that, I'm going to actually start work on making his chest armour. I start work by um, making a paper template. And I'm going to cut this out of cereal card, just to have a couple of layers and stick it together and then paint it and all that kind of stuff. The problem is, I usually work with fun foam, but you can sort of destroy a silhouette by adding too much fun foam and it kind of gives you a bizarre bulk. Like Fun foam might be fine for the um, elbow armour, the brace and the knees, just not really for the chest plates. So we're going to try it this way. I'm just fixing on the plate armour with ribbon and then I'm going to layer it up with some different um, cardboard slices and give it a bit of 3D paint but it's going to come on and off with magnets across the back. First step to making doll armour, hack up bits of fun foam until it looks about right. So I have chromed effect these two pieces and this one I'm just going to use some regular paint. The glittery bit is some 3D paint that will help it sort of like stand out so that I know where I'm going with some paints. So yeah, we'll see how it looks when it's done. Okay, so the armour is finally done and here's where we reach a problem. Because I need to glue this to the um, actual outfit which means I needed to know where the ribbons come on here so I can remove it and take it on and off. The problem is, if you glue it onto things, it's going to seep through and damage the skin. So I've got to wrap him up underneath with some sort of secure plastic. Not like cling film or anything like that, it'll go straight through that. Um, usually like candy wrappers or something daft. And the other thing is... If you've got a tiny bit of paint underneath here, you get glue on that paint, it spreads everywhere. It doesn't matter what you've sealed it with, you've got to be very, very careful when you place it in. This one is a little bit too tight, which means there's a good chance it might not work properly. So I might have to try and find a way to widen it. This probably could be easily done with straighteners. Fun foam is very easily bent and unbent with um, heat. I've just added a cravat. This has got a magnet in the other side so that it can be easily pulled apart. I'm just putting one or two more finishing touches. 
I've added a bit more 3D paint to the outsides of the foam just to really bolden that up. I've um, glued the inside of his hair just to sort of like keep it in a nice shape. Um, I've added a belt to the top of the skirt which sort of just straps over. That way it sits in a much better position. So everything's just getting like tiny adjustments. We can see here where I've added all the little bits of nail art studs, which just really make it pop a little. Building the bow, I start off by tracing a picture onto a plastic tub, which I cut out and I glue into like a couple of layers to build it up. Then I use some polymer plastic to build it up even further. I would have used clay in the past, but this would have made it really heavy and not very great for posing later. Then I build it up with some 3D paint, you know, remember keeping it light, some cardboard and some um, embroidery thread just around the edges to sort of really give that shapes and give it some strong colours. Then I kind of dry brush it with a gold paint and a bit of the metallic black across the black parts and some give it some nail art studs. There, done, simple. It's really great to elasticate it to the hands, that way I've got it in place already. This one really worked out perfectly for the size. I quite like how the Ever After High Boys already have like one sort of grabbing hand. I don't know if this character originally came with a bow, so that might be the reason he has his hand in that shape. I also use a toothpick and glue a bit of cardboard to it, paint it black and it's already in a nice sort of position. I have to say I really like the way that he turned out. Um, it was so good to find some shoes that I could actually modify here. That made things a lot easier for this project and I really just, I'm just so happy with it. And now I cannot wait for Free Hopes to come out. <laughs>